Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm going to turn the comments on here. Um, <clears throat> I still didn't post a link. I apologize. Hopefully some of you are out there. It'll be fun. I'm going to uh, show you a little something that was a little bit of a tragedy. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it turned out. And um, talk to you about a few things that I've got planned for um, the shop. And I want to get your feedback on that. So um, I kind of consider you guys my tribe <laughs> so i want to hear what you have to say about it um so i'm going to take some notes and finding something to write on here we'll see what we find there's a pen it's always a good first sign it's just always good that's a paper but it has something on it we'll find another paper yeah this one will work so welcome welcome I'm just waiting for a few guys to show up. I'm a little bit early. So some of you are on. Thank you for joining. And I think what I will do... Okay, so first of all, if you're looking for the links for last week in the description, I didn't get those put out there. I'm sorry. I will do that tonight. I did the research and found the places, but I didn't just get down here. I just didn't get down here to put them on. But I'll do that tonight. Um, I What else was I going to tell you about last week? Uh, can't remember. I can't remember. Hey, Kathy. Hey, B. How are you guys? Hey, Susan. Um, so, <laughs> Herschel's down here, too. He'll probably be running through at some point. Um, but I was upstairs running a little bit late tonight because I made the dinner tonight. And um, Everett does a lot of the cooking, so I did that tonight. We saw a recipe on Sam the Cooking Guy. I don't know if you guys watch him. Um, that it was supposed to be like a lasagna sandwich. And so he toasted the bread, French bread, and then he, you know, made the lasagna sauce and the cheese and stuff. And he put it all together like a sandwich. And so, you know, I did it a little bit differently because I couldn't find, I found French bread, but it wasn't crusty enough for me. So I sliced it like a hoagie. And it turned out pretty good, but um, Everett said it tasted more like a, kind of like a meatball sandwich. <laughs> Uh, or a meatball sub or something, which I've actually never eaten, but it was pretty good. So I'll keep working on that recipe and see if I can't perfect it. And I got some finishes in this week and I had another finish that was almost done. And that's when the tragedy happened, which I'll tell you about. Hey, Patty. Um, oh, I know what I said. I was going to post another link to you. I will, um, I will post a link just, I'll make a little video and just put it out here that says that it's a tutorial on how to comment because I know a lot of you guys are having trouble commenting on the um, on the live videos. Hey Teal, oh gosh, you're gonna find out on Tuesday if you need surgery. Well, um, hey Lori from Paducah, cooler but still very humid. Yeah, both here. Hey Deb, hey Janice. Um, I'll tell you this much, Teal. I um, had a really badly broken ankle in 2006 and I was I think 36 or so when I broke it um uh, 30 maybe older I don't remember now 38 or something um hey Kelly <laughs> yeah Sundays yeah we're switching to Sundays so that um more people voted for it so we're doing that hey Sharon anyway what I was going to tell you is that when I was doing physical therapy for that and it was really mangled it was awful um, if you ever see the x-rays, it looks like Frankenstein. It's horrible. Um, it's got a plate on one side, a bunch of screws and screws on the inside. Um, it healed faster with surgery than the folks who had the same kind of break that were in physical therapy with me that didn't have the surgery. So I would say that, um, either way we'll be okay. So if you have to have the surgery, don't be afraid of it. It might actually speed your healing in the long run. And if you don't have to have the surgery, that's good, too, because she didn't have to have the surgery. So um, <clears throat> it's not always a bad thing, I guess, is my, my note on that. It actually sometimes can speed your healing along. Yay, Terry, you didn't miss us. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Ruthie. Um, <clears throat> Alice Ellen Usher. Yay, Lori. Yay, Endeavor, too. Yes, I saw mine tonight. <clears throat> I need to pick it back up. So, do you guys want to hear about the tragedy? We've got about 40 people in here at this point. 41 or so. I don't know. Um, so, I was stitching on um, 
I think I mentioned to you guys last week that I had been working, and I showed it to you, I think, even. The Christmas Etui. Um, again, I'm drawing a name on the, a blank on the name. I wish I was drawing a name on the blank. A blank on the name Betsy Morgan, maybe. Um, and uh, I am, I am almost done with that one. The stitching. I mean, I literally, that's the same with the artist. She broke her clavicle. That's good. Yeah, do whatever he advises you to do for sure. For sure. And was it your left hand? It's not your stitching hand, is it, Teal? I can't remember what she said now. Um, bless her heart. I know that hurts. That's got to hurt. Ugh. I don't envy you. Um, but my ankle did heal. Even though when I... The first urgent care I went to, um, the, the doctor kind of flipped out. And he said, they never should have brought you here. It's broken. And see, I was, it was my first husband, which might give you some insight into this um, relationship change. I was taking the trash out on a Saturday night, and I was still living in London. And he um, was living at home, but he was getting ready to fly to Germany the next day. And I was flying back to London, and then he was going to come and meet me in London the following weekend at the little house that I had there. And so we were having dinner together. And I was taking the trash out, and I thought I was at the bottom of the deck stairs, and I wasn't, and I overstepped. But you, but you hurt your right arm too. Hmm. Yeah, you probably. Yeah, hopefully he will tell you to get get back to stitching, and I'm I'm sure you will in your rehab, so that'll be good. Um, and so I thought I was at the bottom. No, I thought I had one more step, but I was at the bottom. And so that's how I broke my ankle. I just hit it weird on the concrete pad because the concrete pad was kind of an incline right there at the bottom. And I heard it break. I heard it break. And I fell. And I fell into an ant bed because <laughs> that's just my luck. And um, I had these two golden retrievers named Bonnie and Clyde. And they were at their fence, which they couldn't get to me. I was outside the fence and they were going nuts. It took my husband at the time, who's no longer my husband, 20 minutes to come out and check on me. And then when he did, he swore it was just sprained. <laughs> and hey, Kelly. And I'm like, I was mad because I was hurting. I was like, dude, I heard it break. <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's just sprained. And so he called the ambulance and they show up and he convinces them that it's just sprained. So everybody listen to the man because the woman in the ant bed who can't get up, who fell, who heard it break, you know, is of no account. And so they took me to urgent care and they left. And then the doctor in urgent care literally was completely freaked out. And um, he was like, he, he looked at me and I had not cried until this point. He looked at me and he goes, I don't even have the kind of medication here that's going to touch your pain in about 15 minutes. He goes, I don't know why they brought you here, and I don't know why they left you here, but that's the worst-looking break I have ever seen. <laughs> so, it's just like, oh, my gosh. Your trash can's back. Yeah, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Poor Maisie. She probably, she's probably, she's been fired. She was probably traumatized by that, too, too. Um, you know, that's what I was doing was going down to take the trash. Um and so he called 911 again for the ambulance to come back and get me. And I just start bawling. And because at that point, you know, he made it sound horrible, which it was horrible. And um, he called in people to look at my x-ray like I was a freak show. And so he's calling people in to look at the x-ray. And so like random people that work there are coming in and going, ugh, and walking out of the room. And I'm like, excuse me. You know, I'm sitting here crying. And I'm like, you know, am I going to be able to walk again? He was like, I'm just going to tell you the truth. He goes, do you want the truth? I said, yeah. He goes, I don't know if you're going to ever walk normally again. He goes, that is honestly the worst break I've ever seen. And I was like, and of course, then I'm bawling again. Anyway, I got really lucky and got a really good surgeon and he fixed it. And I'm fine. I don't even have like um, arthritis or anything. <laughs> so I'm 50, 54 now. And I still don't have any arthritis or anything, but... Yeah, you're never taking out the trash again. No, you should get somebody to do that for you. Or just throw it over the banister. <laughs> Maybe they'll come pick it up. But, um, yeah. So, you know, it was another few years before um, I got divorced. But 
it probably should happen right then and there. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You know, holy cow. And Everett's so the opposite extreme. You know, he actually, after I had my hysterectomy, and we had only been married, oh, like three or four months, four months maybe. And we'd been together about four years. After I had my hysterectomy, he called my surgeon at home. <laughs> and it was the second surgery I had after that because my hysterectomy went poorly and another surgeon had to do some work and fix the first surgeon's work. Um, they snagged my bladder when they were sewing me up with a stitch. And so that had to be fixed. And um, so he actually called her at home because she gave him her home number. Bless his heart. He really was trying so hard to help me because I was in so much pain. I just was not doing well. Anyway, so I'm quite happy with my choice and the man in my life now. <laughs> but um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you that if you do have to have surgery, it might, it might be the better thing. You know, nobody wants to have surgery, but whatever helps you heal will be the thing to do for sure. Hey, Rita. Hey, Linda. Um, so... It's hot down here. Oh, yeah. So that's something new. So I've started for real to have hot flashes. <laughs> I'm sure I've had them before, but I never knew what they were. Never really noticed them. And uh, like my glasses are fogged up right now. <laughs> but in the last like week, I've had like three or four genuine hot flashes. <laughs> so I'm just like, seriously. It's just all of a sudden I'm like super hot and sweaty. And I'm like, can you turn the fan on? The first time that happened, I was down here in the basement working in the shop, and I thought Everett had turned the AC off for some reason. <laughs> and I was like, why did he turn off the AC? And I didn't say anything about it. I just worked through it. But then when I had, like, the third hot flash, I was like, yeah. You know, I thought the other day that maybe you had just turned the air conditioner off, but I guess that was actually my own private <laughs> summer going on there. So he's thrilled. <laughs> oh, gosh done stuff power surges okay that's what i'll do power surges um so the tragedy so i was working on the christmas etui which i showed you last week which is all it's on white linen and um i was literally i have to take the glasses off because they're falling up i was literally almost done i mean i am down to basically just putting my name and the year on there again. Like I've got the year on there on like a um a scissor fob or something, but I'm it was 2021 when I started, so I'm gonna put 2022 on there. And that'll show the ending. And just like some outlining of some flowers. And um last night we were both just we just took the day off basically. And <laughs> we didn't do a whole lot. And I really wanted to finish that. And so I'd been stitching on it, and I was almost done with all the stitching. I mean, not the putting together. And it was dinner time, and we waffled around and waffled around. Neither of us wanted to cook or anything. I said, okay, well, I, he'll eat leftovers. I'm not a leftover fan unless it's Thanksgiving leftovers, and then I can eat those. Um, but most of the time, I'm not a leftover fan. And he'll eat stuff way after he should. Um, he's like Mikey. He'll eat anything. And so... I don't know. There was something in there from earlier in the week that he was like, oh, I can eat it. And uh, I um, I ate cereal. Lucky Charms. Dinner of Champions. And, you know, I put the bowl over on my little stitching table. Just mistake number one. And um, I'm sure you can see where this is going now. And uh, I am... Um, thought well i'll get up in just a minute and i'll rinse out the bowl or maybe i'll let the cats have some because they love it and i know they shouldn't have it but it doesn't seem to really hurt them and they love it and marmal you know she's like 20 years old and she has her own health issues <laughs> she's always got a snotty nose and herschel has been having a little issue this week and he's been to the vet and um so i thought well they like it i'll, I'll let them have some milk it's a little treat and so I reached over to get the bowl, and I turned the whole thing over in my lap. I mean, the whole bowl. And it was a big cereal bowl. And it only had milk in it at this point. I had eaten all the Lucky Charms. It was just milk. And so, of course, I had my needlework somewhere in there. I can't tell you where at this point. I'm sure I had put it over to the side because I reached for the bowl. But some of it still got on there. So I'm sitting there, and I have on this little skirt, this little yellow skirt, which is like a skirt with shorts underneath it. And it's full of milk. 
<laughs> and the floor is full of milk. And the couch under me is full of milk. And my husband's mouth fell open. And he looks over and he sees my stitching. And he jumps up like a lightning bolt. And um, he, he he looks at me like, what do you want me to do? And I hand him my stitching. And he runs off to get a towel and brings it back. And he came back with the towel. And so I couldn't even get up until I got all the milk up. And then I, um, you know, had to clean it up first. And I come back and the cats are down there looking it up off the floor. I was like, oh, at least they got their treat. And uh, so, you know, I immediately had to like change clothes. I mean, it was just like crazy town. And Everett's not saying a word because I know the whole time he's thinking about the stitching. And, um, and he knows that some of the threads can't get wet, you know. And I was literally almost done with this thing. And um, so, you know, true to my nature... I didn't get upset. I did it to myself, right? I mean, I shouldn't have left the ball there. I certainly shouldn't have been reaching for it when I'm sitting in my little stitching thing. And it was all me. And uh, so I wasn't mad or hurt or crying or upset or anything. I was just like, okay. I took care of all the things. And um, and at this point, I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to stitch it again. Because I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if I love it enough to stitching it, stitch it again. And so... Um, None of you are commenting right now. You're all waiting to see what happened, aren't you? Well, we're going to find out together. So I got the stitching, took it out of the hoop, had to cut the needle off of it, um, and immediately took it to the sink and rinsed it out just with water. It was stitched, is stitched with Gloriana silk thread all through it, which is an over-dyed silk thread from Gloriana, and then just a plain white linen. I knew the linen would be okay. I figured those threads were going to run. And so I rinsed it out only with water because I just didn't want to add anything to it. And there wasn't milk all over it. It was only in a couple spots. But you know how that is when you put something in the water, it all gets wet. And so you might as well just rinse it. So I didn't see anything bleed during the rinsing. And I rinsed it pretty good a couple times. And, um, and then I rolled it up. And then I left it. And so, here it is. And so I thought we would find out together um, what happened. So this is it. I truly, truly have not unrolled it. I am a master of uh, delayed gratification. It's still a little wet in here, um, I feel like. So, so here we go. Looks like it's going to be okay. So, I'll get you close up. You're looking at the front. And it's still a little bit wet. That I don't see any bloody spots, for lack of a better word. I don't see anything that looks like it bled. I can't really see what you're seeing now. Let's get over a little bit. But, yeah, see that block right there with all the little leaves around it? That's where I was at. That's the end. So, because I've been a very good girl all of the last five days. Looks like I was spared any horrible fate. But um, looking at it really super close, it does not look like it bled much. I do see a little bit of bleeding with the red Gloriana and the Bargello. So, and that looks like the only place that bled is in the Bargello here. This red, one red stripe right there in the Bargello. Looks like the only place that bled just a smidge. Honestly, I could live with that. It would not hurt my feelings at all to live with that. It's very minimal for what it went through. It's just that top row of red that bled. Um, I'm going to rinse it again. I think that'll come out if I rinse that again. It's interesting. You can see it on the back better. You can see where it bled on the back. I know there's not a lot of good light down here. Apologize, but you can. I don't know if you can see it any better or not. You can sort of see some of the red coming out into the linen. Um, I'm gonna call that a win for the team. <laughs> so, you know, and and so that's a good that's a good experience for us all, right? Um. It'd still be cursing yourself out, yeah. I didn't, believe it or not. I was just dumb. I mean, we all do some dumb stuff. 
now you now you know if you've ever done anything done you're not alone um so i'm gonna roll it back up to keep it kind of moist and tonight i will go back up there and i will rinse it some more on that end probably just that end because the rest of it didn't look like it bled and see if i can get that to bleed out and so a couple things um almost all over dyed threads whether they say they'll bleed whether they say they're color safe or not um you just never know <laughs> so the fact that most of those gloriana didn't bleed to me I, i'm just like that's that's amazing i think that's fantastic um you know testimony to their quality so um on one of your trips to Asheville, your stitch pan went missing. Oh gosh, 20 of 30. That's terrible. Um, you keep the small bleed. It's a reminder of grace for it. That's true, Rita. And I might, I mean, it's kind of pretty. It's not terrible. So, um, yeah. Well, I'll tell you something else about the lottery thing here in a minute. Remind me if I forget. I have to tell you something about that. It's kind of weird. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, the colors that Jen generally will bleed are things that have a lot of pigment so like a really um deep red or deep green or deep blue or black sometimes those will bleed no matter what the tag says about color fastness um but most of those didn't even though they were really rich colors which i'm just i'm thrilled honestly <laughs> i thought it was gonna be a lot worse um but i thought you would enjoy seeing it with me now, i don't know if enjoy is the right word but you know it happened last night so i thought might as well save it for you guys today but uh yeah i consider that a huge win and um you know it's for me i wasn't making it for anybody in particular so i can live with it lucky charms right <laughs> so now i don't have to divorce lucky charms since they didn't completely destroy that and there was a lot of work in it i could have restitched that um there was a lot of work in it but i feel like I, it went pretty quick um use wet q-tips for that area while your fabric is still down that's a good idea okay um karen from hendersonville oh yeah i would love to see you soon hopefully yeah q-tips okay i'll try that i'll do that i'll see if i can do something with that but again you know if it stays it's fine i mean some people pay money to get that effect on stuff but um and those were silk so um you know all in all um i do think that's fantastic that it wasn't a whole lot worse so yikes note to self no food in the stitchy area that's just the way it should be no food in the stitchy area um i should have ate that bowl of cereal at the table that's what i should have done because i can see the tv from the table so next time i did eat dinner at the table tonight I did. I did not go near the couch or my little stitching place. Rose, you'll have to rewatch the video. Um, you missed me showing a sampler that I spilt milk on last night. Not a sampler, but an etui. All the stitching for my Christmas etui from Betsy Morgan. Um, anyway, it survived. So that's good. The drama. So that's just about finished. I finished um, the stitching for Tomato Tomato from Hands on Design. Um, I do have the stitching finished. I double checked it and I've got all the stitching finished for um uh for the 17th, the thing we did together. And I have all the stitching finished for the class that I took with um hands on design about a month or so ago. Just need to put those together. So I'm gonna try to get some finishing done this week. And I've been trying to pick things up that I need to finish stitching. I actually realized tonight that I didn't have um, the stitching completed for the custom design from Lindy Stitches that she did for us, the weather vane. Um, yeah, Rose, it, it, it actually came through okay. Um, it's got a little bit of bleeding, but nothing crazy. So either way, it's good. If I can get the, ble the bleeding out, it was a red that bled, then um, that's great. And if not, I'm okay with that. So it's pretty either way. So, that's my story and i'm sticking to it but wow it was a good reminder you know i sometimes just don't take care with my needlework i do so much needlework it's so funny because when i'm in class and stuff i won't you know and i always wash my hands before i stitch 
you know, so if I've touched anything, I can't believe I did it, really, but I did, <laughs> so there you go, just one of those things, um, so there's that, yeah, thank you, um, so, um, I was telling you about finishes, and I meant to have them all ironed and show them to you, but I don't, so maybe next week I'll have some finished items, fully finished items to show you, because I'll be excited about that, but I picked the weather rain back up, and I do have a finished model for that, um, because the designer, Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches, stitched this one, but I wanted to make another one, and so this one's almost done, too, it should be done by next week, I'm trying to finish out some things that are just hanging around, um, and then I want to start stitching and keep stitching on Alice Ellen Usher and finish up some of the models for the um, samplers that we have and get a few new ones out. So, yeah, the one time I let my guard down. I would like to say it's the one time I've let my guard down, Rose, but it's not. Because <laughs> I'm just, oh, I, it's the first time I've eaten cereal over there around my needleworks. Last time, too. Um and sometimes I drink all the milk. This is a silly conversation, isn't it? Sometimes I drink all the milk. But I was saving it for the cats. So, there you go. Too generous. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple things. Because I want your feedback. Um, I need some model stitching done. <laughs> and so, um, I've talked to one of you who is going to help me with some. But I'm going to need more help when the shop opens and so this is what i'm thinking about doing and i'd like to get your feedback on it i'm thinking about as some new designs come out that are small um kind of putting a, a little group together of ones that i'd like to have stitched and if somebody um wants to stitch that design anyway then i'll provide enough materials for them and the chart for them to stitch it twice and they can keep the chart and then i just want the model back <laughs> stitched it doesn't have to be framed and um oh i could stitch another row and that would cover that up that's a great idea that's perfect that's actually better than wetting the whole thing again thank you sheila <laughs> that's perfect and i love bargello and there's room and it won't hurt it at all that's a great idea thank you because i think that's the only thing that actually bled like that the other red if it bled i didn't see it and that might have been the part that got the milk on it um, I don't know, because I don't know what the acid in milk does to anything. That's the other thing I was a little bit worried about. Should I have put some detergent on it, which I didn't. But I did rinse it really, really well, and there wasn't much milk on it. I don't remember where the milk was, though. Um, I was just more concerned with getting it out. But that's a fabulous idea. Thank you. Um, so the models. So that's what I'm thinking about doing, is maybe putting together a little program where... Let's say some Brenda Gravay stuff came out, and I would like to have some models. And I've got a little group of, you know, people and models. And then if it happens to be one that you want to stitch anyway, then you can basically, if you don't mind stitching it twice, have all the materials for free. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that. I'd like your feedback on that. I'll probably, I have to figure out how to structure that because I want to make sure I get them back. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, uh, and within a reasonable period of time, so like 30 days, you know, and it would only be the smaller ones. If it was a bigger one, um, I have another program in mind. So if it's a sampler or something like that, then I have a different idea in mind for that, um, a different way to, you know, kind of reward people or compensate people. So yeah, I think I got all the milk out of it, but I, I, I think I did. I rinsed it really, really well. So I'm pretty sure I got it all out. Because I don't think much got on it. There were just two spots. But um, I'll go back and check it out really good. Um, so let me know what you think about that. I have heard the other shops kind of do that. Like they have a counter on their checkout. A little basket on their checkout counter. Um, what if we... Oh, you know, I'm, I'd am love to have um, models on loan. And that's really the best way for me to do it. Um, some people don't want to part with them. Because <laughs> they, they just got it finished or whatever. But I would love to have things on loan. And so, um, when the shop opens up, if, you know, we can... Maybe I'll put out a, a list of things that I would like to have. And if you guys have stitched them, that would be fantastic. Um... But, yeah, that's another way to do it, too. And um, 
And then the bigger pieces, the samplers especially can work that way. That's the way most people get models for those. Um, the sassafras samplers, I've got to get together a group of model stitchers so that we can start getting those stitched maybe before we publish them. Um, because it does two things. It finds any errors um, before the first publishing comes out, the first printing. And it also gets a nice picture for the cover. So, um, you know, I might, if you guys are ever interested in some, some things like that, let me know. Because I might get a little group of people together that would be interested in something like that and get some stitching done before we publish. Uh, when is the shop opening? Yeah, I think we will open. So we're getting toward the end of August. Today's what, the 20th or something? I don't see the date on my computer. I still think that we're going to be in there in September, but I don't know if we'll fling the doors open in September. I think it might be October. Um, because we got a lot of work done over the last week and the gutter guys are coming this week. They came on Friday and did part of their work and they'll come back next week and do the rest of it. Um, so I think we're pretty close. We got a lot of, we had to do a lot of stuff here at home this week. We had, I've mentioned before that we had some excavation going on out back and we um, had those guys out here off and on all week. So we were, we had to spend time here instead of going to the Baird house. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your work would be fine. That'd be great. Um, Terry, I appreciate that. Yeah, we, um, I'll work through the whole model thing because I think um, there's no way I can get it all done. And I would like to have more models in the shop because everybody loves them. <laughs> and, and there's lots of ways I can reward people, um, even for like a loan of something. So there's fun things we can do that. Thank you, Barbara. I would appreciate that. Um, and, um, and so, and then the other thing that I wanted that I've been thinking about and working through is, um, kind of a loyalty program. And we, <laughs> yeah, we're just some fabric and get busy on some new releases. We, when I first opened the shop in 2014, uh, which has been a long time ago, we did a little reward program, which is just a punch card. Um, and that doesn't really work if you have, you know, a big online family like we do. And so I really want to, I, I kind of took that one out of play when we opened the brick and mortar here because it just wasn't working. Um, and we already had a pretty big online business at that point. Um, so I took that out of play and all this time I've been, you know, messing around in my head with how to reinstitute it and what to do and how to do it because, um, I really feel like, um, it's not just about how much money you spend with a shop that makes you a loyal part of our family. It's also, you know, how you support the shop, you know, and, and whether or not you feel like you're part of our family and, and loyalty comes from a lot of different places, not just dollars and cents. And I hope you guys get that feel for me too, that that's not a big surprise. Um, but that's why I've kind of held back on, you know, instituting a program because it's not just about, um, dollars. Um, although it, that's part of it and we appreciate it. That's how we stay open and pay the bills. Um, but I wanted it to be more and I just couldn't figure out in my head how to make that work logistically, um, you know, with, um, online media and stuff, social media. And, uh, I've really worked hard at working it out, but I've got to finalize it all. But I want to give you some thoughts and I want your feedback and you can feel free to post it in a note. You can send it to me in, um, a private message or an email or whatever you want to do. And I'm the only person that opens the email that comes to the shop. So if you ever wondered that, um, it is only me at this point and for the foreseeable future. And it has been always only me. Um, so anytime I've tried to have help with that, it's gotten a little weird. And so it's really hard to have multiple people in there because it really is, um, you know, a touch point for the business, which I like to be part of. Um, so if you have feedback on this, let me know. But this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that um, it should be an annual program and it should restart every calendar year. I'd kind of like to make it start at a different time, um, but I don't want to make people have to remember a different time. So it's just going to be calendar year. 
And the way I'd like to make it work is that each calendar year, you pay a tiny little fee, like a membership program. And I'll tell you why I want to do that. Um, this is the part that I might back off on, but this is the way I'm thinking about it. If you do a new membership every year, it helps me um, make sure that you're still participating because what I want to do is reward the people that are in it every year throughout the year. Um, I want it to be a back and forth kind of thing. And so let's say if you paid like, I don't know, a $15 fee, then you would get a brand new membership card every year, which would be kind of cool, kind of fun. And you'd be able to use that card and that number online would link to your account. Um, and then you would immediately get um, a coupon or whatever for like a 15% off of any single purchase anytime during the year. Um, and so you can make your money back um, if you want to. Uh, and you get some stash. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm thinking about the whole Patreon thing that everybody's doing, but I don't really want to do Patreon. I don't, that's not congruent with the shop model. Um, so I'm trying to marry a few things. And I've thought about it, honestly, guys, I've been working through this for like three or four years. <laughs> so, and I haven't quite gotten it down. But um, I really want to make it to where you feel part of something and to where I'm accountable to you based on that membership. And hopefully that, you know, uh, motivates you to be loyal to us as a shop. And I don't want it to be so punitive that you don't feel like you can go shop with another shop because we all like to do that. I mean, I do that. <laughs> so I shop at other shops too. Um, so I, I don't want it to be like that where you feel like you're having to put every penny over here. And neither do I want it to be where it's, if you're not, if you're not at a, a point in your life where you can spend a bunch of money, I don't want you to feel excluded. So that's why I'm going to go a different way with it too. So that's the first part of it. Restarts every year. You get a cool little swag bag and you get a discount coupon. You can use it anytime during the year. Um, and then once a quarter, we will send you something in the mail. Or if it is a PDF pattern, it could just be a PDF and email. Um, but what I'm thinking for that, and you just have to be a member so you don't have to buy anything to get this but if you're a member then once a quarter we'll send you something relatively small because we're going to be doing it four times so you might get like um, a set of three threads you know or you might get a piece of fabric or you might get you know a um, original design pattern that we did or something like that so that also helps you recover that whatever that charges that $15 so I think the $15 is um, really just a, a placeholder to where I can get people to renew it every year. Um, but I think you'll get more value than that back through the year. Okay. So that's that part of it. And then the other part, there's two other parts of it. What I'm thinking about, <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Um, what I'm thinking about is for, um, quarterly. So we would do, um, a monthly drawing and a quarterly drawing and so monthly let's say if you spend $25 a month and and that can be um, inclusive of shipping and taxes or whatever because I know that if you're paying shipping um, you know that's money to you and you're choosing to do that or if you're shopping with us and you're in North Carolina so you're paying taxes I know that that's extra money for you so I want that to count um, and if you meet our thing where you don't have to pay shipping, um, then I think that's okay. You, you've, you've gotten free shipping. So I think you come out okay that way too. So I put some thought into that. Okay. So monthly we'll do a drawing for everybody who spent at least $25 in the shop. And it would be a gift certificate that you can use online or in the shop or whatever. Um, and I think that I'm probably going to try to do it where your opportunity to win that gift certificate stays the same. And so if we have, as the basis grows and we've got more people participating, you have to be a member to be part of that, but more people participating, I think I'd like to keep your odds of winning that the same. And so if we double the number of people participating, then we'll double the number of certificates that we give out. So I think that's the way that'll work. And we'll do that every month. And it'll be, you know, kind of a, um, 
I haven't picked the number yet, but you know, something fun to win, but nothing crazy, right? Um, so I'm thinking like $25 gift certificate. And, and that works out for us too. And so, and then quarterly for another dollar amount, like if you spent, let's say, just a number out of the air, if you spent, let's say, $100 in a quarter, then you fall into another drawing once a quarter, and maybe that's for $50, something like that. And then on the annual basis, you know, if you hit a certain threshold, then, you know, we'll do something else for that. But the way I see that is, um, and you would get one point for every dollar you spend. So one point for every dollar you spend is the way that will work. And so you have those opportunities to win um, during the month and during the quarter and during the year based on money that you spend. Now, the other side of that, and you can win more than one month or more than one quarter in the year, right? So your odds of winning stay the same, whether you won before or not, because you're spending money every month or quarter to be included in that. So now the other side of that coin, and this is why I've never done one, is because I wanted to include people who can't, you know, spend a lot of money, is to incorporate that in. Sorry, I knew my throat was going to get dry today. So, and I hope you guys don't mind I'm rolling all this out in front of you. I've tried to talk to some other people about it. Um, but honestly, your feedback is the most valuable feedback I can get. So, um, and, and I can, I don't think the rules are as complicated as they're going to sound. It's just going to be a point system, kind of like the airlines, a point system. So let's think about social media. So on social media, we're on YouTube. Um, we do these Friday night videos and I used to do like, um, a video, a, a recorded video on a regular basis, sort of, <laughs> which will get more regular. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, I'm not on Twitter, and won't be on Twitter. So, um, I want to include people, and I want to recognize that that's a big part of, you know, loyalty to our shop, too. And so, what I thought about with that, because I think I can track it pretty easily, <clears throat> um, for videos, you would get, like, a certain number of points, like, let's just say... I don't know, 10 points, once you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once you subscribe, you get 10 points. Um, if you participate in our videos by um, making a comment, or um, uh, that's the only way I could really tell if you participated. <laughs> and in my videos that I did that are pre-recorded, I used to... Um, give out some prizes, which I'm going to do tonight. And I would ask you to use a word in a sentence. And so the comments were always fun. So if you do that, then, you know, you can get so many points for that. Let's just say five points. So if you watch a video and you actually comment in a way that I know you've watched the video, um, then you'll get points that way too. Um, you get points to subscribe. We'll jump over to Instagram if you share a whip on Instagram or um, I can't really do it on comments because it's hard for me to track comments on Instagram and Facebook. But if you share a whip um, on Instagram or Facebook, then I think you can earn comments that way too. Um, and those will be like, you know, on a, I don't know, probably a, I'll have to think through that, how that would work, like a weekly basis probably um, for that. And so that's another way for you to earn points. And um, then at the end of the year, we would accumulate all those points and do some rewards for that. And if you hit a certain threshold, let's just say you had a thousand points, I think that we would reward you by letting you carry over a hundred of those points. And then we'd, all, we'd also enter you into like some other kind of, you know, drawing or whatever. But I'm trying to make it to where... Um, you can earn points by supporting us in other ways besides, you know, spending money, although we appreciate that. That's, we are a retail shop, but you know, there's more to a relationship than money. <laughs> so that's what, and I try to be, you know, I try to, to, to give back to you guys and I'm, I want you to feel that, but I want us to, 
you know, I want it to work both ways. I want me to be able to do stuff for you, um, but I want you to, you know, help us too with our shop by, you know, whatever, commenting, watching videos, whatever, um, or by buying things from us. That's fantastic too. Um, so that's kind of where my head is and that's what I'm formulating through. I really want to start it, um, like soon. <laughs> so I would like to kick it off sometime here this fall. Um, and, you know, probably retroactively go back and pick up points for, you know, August and September, if we end up in September, which we probably will before we get the cards made. Um, and then these points that you get this year will automatically roll into next year. The other thing I want to do with that is, you know, a lot of people talk about um, not being able to get registered for classes. So I want to draw that whole thing into class registration. And that's really what started me thinking about it. Um, you know, I want to make sure that the people who come to our classes are, you know, at least the first chance are people who... Um, you know, are part of our tribe. <laughs> so, you know, there's lots of teachers. We bring in some really fantastic teachers and, you know, sometimes it's competitive to, to get into their classes. And so I think the way we'll work that is that, you know, all these points will accumulate. And then at the end of the year, those are your points going into the next year. And the people who have a certain level of points or who are part of that group at all, um, get first chance to register for classes. I think that's the way it should be. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that, that that's the way that should work. So, um, so it wouldn't really be in full play until 2024. Um, we'll try to use it, you know, we'll go through all the process and reward all the points and stuff the rest of this year, next year. But when it comes to classes, you really wouldn't see that aspect of it until 2024. And that works because 2023, we already have classes out there and have people registered. And um, we're already rolling through 2023 because that's classes get, you know, registered for and set out a year in advance a lot of times. Um, <clears throat> so these are the things on my mind as I start to ramp the shop back up to its full, you know, presence in the world. Um this is what I'm thinking about and I would love to have your feedback and you know, and what you're thinking about that. It might sound a little complex. I don't think it is. I think it's, it's pretty, pretty neat. You can earn points, you know, by participating with us in social media, or you can earn points in your purchases. Um, and you know, we'll get it all written out and make it really clear and how you, you know, accumulate those points and how they carry over. You get some cool swag because you'll get the little stuff at the beginning of the year when you register. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll get stuff on the quarter too. And then of course there's little drawings all the way. Honestly, um, that's, that's the way I think it should work. I think that it shouldn't be all about dollars and cents. I really think it should be about, um, how you engage and the relationship that you build with your customer base. And this is why I haven't done it already because it's more than just me keeping track of how much money you spend, because I know a lot of you really, really support our shop in lots of ways that don't involve spending money. And I know a lot of you do make your purchases with us. And again, I'm not belittling that. I really appreciate that because that's what pays the power bill and keeps the lights on and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. And, you know, I really am trying to return that to you and the things that we bring you, um, either online content or, you know, in-person classes or things like that. So that's where my head is. And I would love to have some feedback on that and see what you think about it. And I will get it more clearly formulated um, as I go forward. So I appreciate you listening to me ramble through all that. <laughs> So that's fine. Um, yes, it's still possible to register for the soiree, but going to cut it off soon <clears throat> because classes are out there. I didn't get my newsletter sent out, but it's on my agenda for tomorrow. Um, so the newsletter will go out. We'll have about a week and a half to finish signing up for classes, which I've seen a lot of you have signed up for classes already. So thank you for that. 
and then we're going to start shipping out so we've got to get we've got to start shipping um we don't have to but we want to make sure you get it in time so we've got to start shipping in early september so um if you haven't gone out and looked at classes and you are signed up for the soiree go take a look you can search under soiree 22 and it should pop right up um go take a look and sign up for your classes if you're not registered for the soiree you won't be able to see the classes um <clears throat> so i will yeah low cost sheila that's what i'm thinking because it's not really i'm not make i don't want to make any money off the membership fee i just want to ready to restart it every year because the other thing that that concerned me was that we would have people in that signed up and five years might go by and you know for whatever reason they've moved on and they're not really participating but i'm still including them in all the things that i do and i don't want that i want it to be current i want it to be a current thing and the only way i can think of to make it a current thing is to have people sign up um, each year and people won't sign up each year if there's not most of the time people don't really follow through with that kind of stuff if there's not an exchange taking place <laughs> and and i know this from experience um of myself <laughs> so you know um and so that's that's kind of what i was thinking about with that is that i'll give you something and you get back on my list and then we start the year fresh with that um except for the points because they you know they some of them might carry over but um anyway i like it what does on hold mean with your soiree order? It means that we haven't shipped out um, the stuff yet. So when you place an order with us, as soon as we print it, we put it on hold. And it's the only way that we've been able to um, mark it in our system so that we don't accidentally print it twice. I actually worked with the programmer one time and had them set up another category and it created a fiasco. And so there's only so many categories I can put an order into. It's complete, um, pending, which means we haven't touched it, and on hold, really. Um, and so whenever we print it out, we move them to on hold. And that means they're printed and we're working on them. Now, for the soiree, some of them I closed out early on because we had so many. I mean, it would be like, I would be looking at like 200 open orders right now if I hadn't closed some of them out. And so if you registered for the soiree, you know three four months ago i probably closed your order out but i have it and i have it printed and honestly i can go into my system and pick up that purchase of soiree and pull all of them together which is what i do to see how many there are and to put your name in the list i basically extract it from my system put it in an excel worksheet and i can work from that and i also have a printed copy of it so um if it's closed that's fine that means you were in the early group if it's still open it means you probably registered in the last month or so um and i've got you printed but i left it open um just because i just haven't gone through and closed those out if you have a class order it's still open and so i shipped if you made an order that had class stuff and something else 98 percent of those i shipped the something else and i kept the class order because i didn't want you to have to wait three weeks for your order um, so you might have those that are on um, hold. You had trouble finding the hard anger class. Yeah, of course. Yes. So if you, um, yes. So the shipping. <laughs> so if you had trouble and you made a couple different purchases for to get your classes in there i'll refund the shipping so when i go back through and ship those out if you've got two or three that you just couldn't get grouped together for whatever reason um you'll see me come back through and refund the shipping on those so <clears throat> don't worry about that <coughs> but that's a good question rose so yeah so for sure yeah patty because you probably signed up early and that would just be your soiree order if you signed up for a class, I don't think I've closed any of those. I think I left them all open because I wanted to make sure that we got them all. But there's there's a lot of different ways for me to go through there and pull them out. Um, and I've got a newsletter that will come out to all of you too, so you'll get that. Okay. You could not sign up for the class. Yeah, so you would have to do the soiree first, and then you can see it. I'm not muted. I don't think I'm muted. Yeah, I'm not muted. Um, 
I'm not muted, Emma. You guys can hear me, can't you? Let me know. <laughs> that would be terrible if I were muted. Am I muted? Yeah, I don't think I'm muted. What is my area code? It is 828. Nope, not muted. Okay, great. Thank you. There is a, There was a little exclamation point by my microphone, which I thought was weird. It scared me for a minute. Um, <clears throat> so, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, lots of rambling. Okay, so I'm going to do some prizes. Okay, so here's the deal with prizes. I've got so much stuff I need to divest of. They're not from my shop. They are from my shopping. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, because I'm a stitcher, right? I don't do this for the money of it. I do it for the love of it. And so I do a little shopping myself. And so um, <clears throat> sometimes I get carried away. And sometimes I have class kits and stuff. And I've not done it on the Friday night videos before. I'm just doing it now. But I've got a few things that I'm going to divest of here. And when I get back into doing my regular floss tubes I'll do it there too but this is called St. Nick's paintbrush and this is from Old Colonial and um, it has everything in there it has the paintbrush it has the cording it has the little bell for his cap it has the floss um, the needle I'm pretty sure it has the banding in there yep I see it it's got the banding in there right there so, if you would like to win this in the comments, and I understand that some of you can't comment right now, you can come back to it and comment later. You have to get on your laptop, probably, or your phone, and you can comment later. Um, put um, Santa in your comment for that one. Okay, and no, don't do it yet, because we've got a bunch of them. Um, and this one is called... Um, and do me a favor, because the comments show up differently in the live version versus the non-live version. I guess you can do it either way. I'll look in both. Um, yeah, I think they all do show up together. The live ones come first, and then the other ones. So you can comment either way. Um, this is a really pretty... This is also Old Colonial. This is stitched over one. It's a pin drum. Tiny, tiny pin drum. And it's a um, sampler pin drum. And it's got a little flag on it. It's kind of patriotic. So the kit includes the charm, the chart, the banding, the wool, and the finishing instructions. And this is it on the back. So you've got your banding here. You've pretty much got everything in there you need. Um, but be aware that it is stitched over one. So is the other one, I think. But banding's not that hard to stitch over one if you're okay with linen. Um, and so for this one... You can just call it um, pin. We'll call that one pin. And all of these are stitched over one. But next week we'll do some that aren't. This one is also um, Old Colonial. Yep, Old Colonial. And the reason I have all these is because I bought them at Williamsburg last Christmas. But I know I'll never get them stitched. And so this is a little scissors pocket. And it comes with the gingerbread charms. It comes with the banding and the needle. And so for this one, um, you can use the word pocket. Santa, pen, and pocket are your words. Um, and so, uh-oh, Sheila, I'm glad you're back. And then this one is... Um... It's sold. I don't think it is sold by Old Colonial. It has a price tag on it from Old Colonial, but I, can't, I don't remember. It says it's designed by um, Barbara Jackson for Celebration of Needlework. And it's a very pretty little, um, it's called a Petite Pineapple Box. And it's a very pretty little pineapple. And it comes with the linen and the little pineapple box. It's a very, very pretty laser cut pineapple box. And the threads and stuff. And so for this one, it's going to be um, pineapple. <laughs> so I'm going to write these down so that I don't forget. Okay, so we had Santa, 
which is this one, the little paintbrush guy. I think that's kind of cool. And then we had Pen, which is the pen drum from Old Colonial. And then we had the pocket, the scissor pocket, which you also you could put a gift card in here, by the way, too. I think would probably work if you wanted to make it. It's a sweet, quick little ornament. And if you didn't want to stitch over one, you could probably enlarge that and stitch that over too. You've probably got enough room to stitch that over too. All the threads and stuff. And um, pineapple, which has a really pretty little laser cut box in it. And so that's the box. And it's got a little magnet in there because you can make it a, a needle keep. You see how that needle is stuck to it? That's because you, they put that tiny little magnet underneath it there. Um, so that one is pineapple. Okay, so you have a week to make a comment. And then I will um, pick the winners and mail them out next week. So, okay, is Santa watching? <laughs> I don't know if I want him to watch. I don't know if I'm ever good enough for that. <laughs> There's a great picture of me sitting on Santa's lap with this horrified look. I'm probably about four or five years old. I have on this sweet little coat. And I've got this bright red fuzzy hair. And I'm sitting looking over at him like, <laughs> who are you and why am I here? It's hilarious. And it looks really funny. It looks like I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> this is going to go poorly. <laughs> So, um, so I did a lot of rambling tonight. Any questions or anything that I didn't talk about or that you guys have for me? Um, so we're Sunday nights now. Susan will be here next weekend for class. Susan Greening Davis. So I hope to see some of you here for class. Um, and then that's it for our live classes for the year. So I talked about the October thing. I'm just not going to be able to do that. We've just got to get moved in. And I know that's a disappointment for some of you. Because I know you wanted to come. And we were thinking about doing a kind of a hybrid October thing this year. I've got it on the schedule for next year. So next year we'll do a, we'll do our soiree in September. And then in October next year, the weekend for Halloween, we'll do a live and an online thing. I just can't do it this year and get us moved into the shop at the same time. So I apologize. Um, you know, <laughs> Did you do that, Denise? How old were you when you did that? Clearly not old enough to know better. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I missed you guys on Friday night. Am I shopping next weekend for online? Um, yes, I am. So, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yes, so I am going to the expo. So I I went last year, and it was great, and we'll be buying at the expo again this year. So we're excited about it. Um, so if you've got expo orders, um, you know, we'll be buying stuff. So if there's something specific you want... Send me a note and let me know. I'll be sure to get it. Um, but we will be shopping at the expo. And there's some great stuff coming out. So I'm excited. <clears throat> um, at the soiree, different stitches for each class. Are the classes you'll be teaching at the soiree different stitches for each class? Okay, so the soiree classes. One of them is a button weaving class. And Allie Dudley is teaching that. Um, and you get the materials for that. And so all the classes are recorded. And so you'll get materials with your um, soiree swag stuff. You'll get your class materials at the same time. And um, then you can watch the video and you can work those classes at your own pace. And each of the people who teach will have a time set up for a live Q&A session. So if you've got questions, you can jump in and um, you were old enough to know better, <laughs> Denise. You can jump in and... Um, ask questions of the teacher and so there's the button weaving class which i think it's an either either an evening star or morning star i forget which one it is the Allie dudley is teaching for us um uh i will go to this video and post links for it and i'm also going to send the newsletter out tomorrow i know i said that last week i didn't get it done um <clears throat> but i will post the links tonight so you can see that that's easy um so that's one of them the other one is a black work class by Susan Greening Davis and then Susan Greening Davis in a separate class is also teaching um, heart anger and these are all little small mini classes so you're learning the basics and they're they're very you'll be able to do 
all of these classes, even if you've never done any of this before. Um, and then the one that I'm doing is um, some specialty stitches. And so it'll be a little piece of banding with a bunch of little specialty stitches and a little motif or two for it. So, um, you'll be that. <laughs> you might have missed something. You might have missed a little bit, Martha. Um, so you might want to go back and watch. <laughs> but, um, yay, Susan, that's a good one. <laughs> that's awesome. So, see this is what i love about this game people use all the words in the same sentence and it cracks me up that's a great one santa keeps a pen in his pocket and wears a pineapple on his head <laughs> so you guys can't use this on that one you have to make up your own that's great <laughs> um okay well the videos expire at some point um i don't think so <laughs> i mean i don't think so i don't know why they would you know, maybe in a year or something, but, um, you know, I think they're great for you to be able to go back and see how to do it. So if you want to do it again, cause I mean, I can tell you that if I weave a button today and six months from now, I won't remember how to weave the button. <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest with you. I wove one in, um, the summer house stitch works class, a Dorset button, and it's not my first Dorset button. And I might be able to do that one tonight, but, um, in a month from now, probably not. So, I don't think they'll expire. Um, so, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If they do expire, I'll send everybody a note. And uh, let you know that they would expire. But I don't think they'll expire. I don't see why they need to. Um, yeah, yeah, teal. Um, but you can watch them and have fun. And, um, and we'll be doing some fun stuff in the soiree itself. So, there'll be stitch groups, stitch rooms. We'll do some stitching together, and we'll do some giveaways in there, and um, last time I did it, I had some folks who I did interviews with. I'll check on that. <laughs> I'm not sure if we'll be able to line anybody up for it this year, but we'll see what we can do. Your pineapple pen fell into Santa's pocket. That's a good one, too, Kathy. Um, Santa pins a pineapple in his pocket. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of those. Um, <clears throat> fun stuff. Fun, fun. I love those. So, um, what else? What else? What else? When's the shop opening? I mean, again, I'm going to say sometime in October to actually physically open. Unless something crazy goes wrong. So, I don't see that happening, though. Um, I think it'll work out okay. Um we're moving along. We're getting, we're getting the hard stuff done. So we have to have a bunch of friends come over and help with the, um, concrete pour. Um, so Everett kind of does that for a living. Like that's part of what he inspects on his job is concrete pours and bridges and roads as they get built. So he's got some friends that are going to come over and help him finish it. So the truck comes out and pours the concrete and then they have to smooth it all out and you have to use some tools to do that. And so he's got several friends that have agreed to come and do that. What am I looking to find at Expo? You know, I, I, I've seen lots of stuff that I like. I haven't posted anything for pre-order. I haven't done pre-orders in a year or so just because it takes a ton of time. And I, I feel like when I do pre-orders, and this is what some of the designers have told me too, that a lot of shops don't actually shop anymore. They just come in and they buy what was ordered. And that takes some of the joy out of it for me. <laughs> and so, and, you know, it definitely gives predictability about where to spend my money. But um, I actually like the opportunity to shop for you guys and show you something maybe you didn't think of, I guess. Which I guess I could do that in addition to pre-orders. And maybe when we get our staff back um, and I have enough help, we'll start, you know, showing previews and stuff again. I don't know that we'll do pre-orders necessarily. Because the other thing about pre-orders, it's really hard to take a pre-order without taking the money. And I don't, at, at least in my system. And I don't really like taking the money and not having the product. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, so, that's one reason I don't do it. Um, your hubby's company is celebrating their 50th year the same week in the store. You know what? It's okay um, because I do think that, you know, you might miss some of the stitch groups, but I think you'll be able to do all the other stuff too. So, yeah, don't worry. Um, so, what else? What else? 
Well, so I mentioned last week Katie Strachan. Did any of you go out and watch Katie? She's another redhead, another ginger, <laughs> maybe about 20 years younger than me. Um, and she's doing some fun stuff with threads and, and her mind is just amazing. Can you share your nephews and niece have a 16 year difference between the oldest and the youngest and every year since the first was born, they get their picture with Santa. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, that's really cool. Cause you get to watch them, you know, kind of grow up with Santa. Um, that's neat. I, yeah, I haven't sat on Santa's lap in a long time. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. 30. Are they still doing it, Rose? Are they still going to get their picture taken with Santa? That's cool. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So, Deb, you said you've been watching Katie. You were watching her before. I really am really. I watched Oh, so this is so funny. So Jackie Duplass, this is a person that told me about her and said that I needed to go watch her. And, and I mentioned that last week and she said, you know, be prepared because you're going to be addicted. And I was addicted. I'm addicted. Right. And so I, um, watched all of her tutorials for the, um, the box that she did with Jacob's design. I forget what she called that box. Harmony, Harmony box or something like that. Um, I'll check you, Lori. I'll check after we get off. I'll get done here um and so i'm really excited about making a box now because i just never thought about practicing and making a practice box so i've ordered my stuff that i need like the bristol paper and all that stuff but i'm going to make it with ac bluebird and so i'm really excited about that so i will be um pulling swa goblins for ac bluebird i'm already re redoing the thread listing for ac bluebird to add to it um, the classic color work silks. And let me show you AC Bluebird in case you don't know which one that is. So this is AC Bluebird. This was our first um, reproduction that we did. And it's an Ackworth sampler. And it's a really great, beautiful Ackworth. Um, but we did it with gentle art threads. And it's beautiful. But they're really hard to get. And we also showed a conversion to NPI and Swat LJ. But I want to get the overdyed look to it. And so I am going to be um, redoing the colors with um, Classic Color Works Bell Swat Silks. Um, so that you can get the overdyed. And uh, and the chart's got to go back to print. Because it's it's done with its first printing almost. There's, there's maybe 15 charts left. And then the first printing of that one is done, which is very exciting for us because that was our first sampler chart that we did. And it's been around since 2018, I'd say. Um, and so it's very exciting that it sold out its first printing. So, um, so yes, so we're going to be, um, and of course it's got DMC. So right now it has, it's charted for DMC, um, Gentle Art Overdyed, Swat LJ, and NPI. <clears throat> the one that looks the best with it is the Gentle Art because it mimics the the way the colors faded over time. But that's why I want to take it to Classic Color Works Bell Swat because they're an overdyed silk. So it's Gloriana, but I don't have the full line of Gloriana right now, and it'll take me a while to get it. So, um, so. This will be coming out with a conversion to um, Belle Soie, Classic Colorworks Overdyes, and their cottons, if you want to do it in cotton, which I think is also beautiful, um, and probably Soie Goblin, so that I can make that box, because I do think that having the Goblin in there, um, it might be a different look, and so I'm going to take a a leaf out of Katie's book and stitch it in Swag Goblin for the box. Um, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Did on the Bluebirds. Yay. Can you buy it now? Yeah, you can buy um, AC Bluebird now. It's for sale now. I don't have all those extra thread conversions. It's just got just, it's only got DMC <coughs> Gentle Art Overdyed Cotton Swat LJ and MPI. But it is a really beautiful, it stitches out beautifully. Lots of people have stitched it, and it's gorgeous stitched. Um, really, really pretty stitched. So, 
If you haven't stitched this one, yeah, definitely put it on your list. I think you would enjoy it thoroughly. I actually won um, a fair at the ribbon with the bluebird right here, that little guy. I stitched him and made a pin keep out of him and won, a, won my only one and only ribbon at the North Carolina State Fair. <clears throat> it was the first time, the only time I've submitted. <coughs> How big is it? Sorry, my throat's getting dry. 211 by 269. So on a 36 count, he is 12 by 15 finished. Um, so, and um, we've got some really beautiful pictures in here too. Um, one of them is of a very similar sampler in the Fitzwilliam Museum. And I sent them a note and asked them if I could include a picture. And they sent me a really high quality um, res image for it. So you get to see another really beautiful, similar um, Ackworth from the Fitzwilliam. In there with it. Um, and this is one that, um, it doesn't say Ackworth on it. But I showed it, I was, I was actually at the Ackworth school. I've been there a few times. <clears throat> and you probably heard me talk about this, or maybe you have, but I was at the Ackworth School, and I showed the curator of their collection um, a really good picture of this one. I didn't take the sampler with me, but I showed her a great picture, and she immediately um, agreed that it was an Ackworth sampler. We think that it's a teaching sample, and we think that's why there's not a name on it. Or the school because we think that the young girl stitched it to be used basically as a resume and I think that's why it's got so many halves because you know most Quaker samplers <clears throat> if you have the half you can do the whole and so if you'll notice she's got several columns of halves and the ones that she did the whole one on there they are asymmetrical and so she was selective for the most part in what she did the holes for versus the halves medallions but it's such a beautiful sampler, and I think it would look great on the box. So I'm excited about that. Um, so, you know, if you are thinking about, I mean, you know, honestly, if you haven't watched Katie Strachan, go out and take a look at some of her stuff. Because she's also using some some threads that we normally don't use in cross stitch, like the Swat Goblins and Swat of Paris. And, you know, we use Swat of Paris in some sampler stitching sometimes. And it's in my... I did the Trish Nguyen um, casket class, and it's in the white work class, like Deb and Beth are in that with me. Um, you're using some Swat of Paris in there, but um, we don't often get a chance to use all these specialty threads, and they are those are silks. They're all different kinds of silks, but it's kind of neat to see what Katie has done with taking, you know, like a Brenda Gervais and using some specialty threads with it and the difference that it makes in it. So it's not something you might want to do on everything, but if you get one that... You know, you just want to try it on. And she's made a few little kits out there, although I think she retires them when they're done. Um, but that's something that, you know, we might, I don't know. You know, I don't want to steal any thunder from Katie. Um, so, you know, I don't want to take anything away from her. So I don't want to do what she's done. But, um, you know, if there's one that you want to stitch in Goblins or something like that that she didn't do, and you want us to convert it, I mean, we'll happy to do conversions and find something for you. Because we do carry the full line of Swat Goblin and Swat of Paris, um, of course, 103 and Swat LJ and MPI. Um, we'll be bringing Gloriana in. Um, as soon as we open the shop back up, we've got Gloriana coming in. So that's always fun. But, you know, and you've got beautiful cottons to choose from, too. Uh, the, you know, we we're just very, very, very blessed with threads these days. So there's... Um, just fantastic, fabulous threads to choose from. I did order, um, I meant to bring them down and I forgot. Uh, I'll show them to you next week. I even left them in the hank. There's a couple silks that I like to buy online. And by the way, I did find out that Vicki Clayton does do wholesale. So, you know, I mentioned that I had stitched that happy birthday with Vicki Clayton and a lot of you guys liked her stuff. Well, she does do wholesale. So I'll be talking to her about bringing some into the shop too. Um, yes, we are open tomorrow. Yes, you can give me a call if you want to. Um, but I will, um, strike and thank you, Candy, um, S-T-R-A-C-H-A-N. I will, um, ugh, forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? 
I have no idea what I was just saying. That's one of the few times I've not been able to do my like ADD thing where I'm back and forth and back and forth. Um, let's see. I was talking about, oh, the silks, the silks. Okay. So Vicki Clayton does do um, wholesale. So we'll be bringing in some of her silks that are for particular charts, like a kit, you know, kind of thing. I don't know that I'll carry the full line. Um, but maybe for certain charts, uh, especially the ones that I want to stitch in those silks, because then I'll have the model done. Um, but if there's certain charts that, you know, you think we should carry, let us know. We can probably do that. And, um, okay, that'd be great. We'll have, we'll have it in. Um, and so the others then that, that I, I don't carry and won't carry, but I use sometimes and think are beautiful, are um, silks for you. So I've ordered some from them and used those. And there's another one called Mrs. Sadas, S-E-D-A-S. And that one comes out of Holland. I believe that one comes out of Holland. And they are just gorgeous. And I ordered um, two hanks. One was called Hope and one that was called Love. And so the Hope was like this really beautiful blue-green kind of um, over-dyed mixture. And Love was this beautiful like red kind of... Um, Mm, I don't even know how to describe raspberry red kind of color combination. So if you stitch like um, some monochrome things, you know, like a long dog sampler or or a um, Jacob de Graaf um, modern folk embroidery um, that you're doing in one color, those hanks are great for that too. So check those out. Mrs. Sadis. Oh, she's from Spain. Okay. Um, man, I love her silks. I do, I do. The... Uh, and the colors are just so beautiful. Just so beautiful. I can't believe I forgot to bring those hanks down here. I'll try to post some pictures online. So look for those. Um, excited about that. Okay, so let me remind you about the words. In case you've forgotten. Um, pineapple. <laughs> pocket. Pin. Pin. <laughs> you want to say it like I do. And... Santa. Okay, I'll tell you one funny thing. So I was upstairs talking to Everett earlier, and I said that, um, and I say it this way a lot because I try not to scare the cats. Um, I said, I'm going to have to vacuum a later. And he said, you're going to have to what? I said, vacuum a. And he said, and he tried to say it, and he couldn't. I said it each syllable, vacuum a. And he said it, and I said, okay, now say it with your accent. And he goes, vacuum. <laughs> I was like, there you go. That's so pretty funny. So we make fun of our own accents here too. So you can make fun of us too. It's all good. <laughs> but well, I enjoyed tonight. I hope you did. I appreciate in advance all the feedback. Um, I would love to hear it, even if it's uh, not not in line with my thinking, especially that, you know, let me know if you think I'm off base with what I'm thinking about for the loyalty program. Um also, for the model stitching, you know, if you have ideas about that, let me know. I would really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday night at the same time. So have a fabulous week and get some stitching done. And hopefully next week I'll have my, my item uh, completely salvaged and dried and ironed. And so if you got here late and you want to know the horrible thing that happened... If it's rolled up here, you'll have to go back and watch. It was just one of the first things I talked about. So it's going to have a happy ending. I'll leave it at that. But all right. Talk to you guys later. Have a great week. Bye.